How are they getting the tattoos done? All right, serial or invader torture. This guy on the left, he turned our cell into an illegal tattoo shop. He took the motor out of a Walkman, attached it to a guitar string and a needle, and he ran those through the outer casing of a pen. So the motor from the, from the Walkman powered the tattoo gun. Then for ink, he had a contraption, and he burned a hair gel product from the inmate store for hours on end. The smoke collected into soot, and the soot was his black ink. And he also had a corrupt female guard who was smuggling colored ink in for him as well. So I mean, you know, this guy had intelligence, and a lot of them do, but the, the jail just doesn't give them anything constructive to channel that energy into, to give them like rehabilitation job skills and stuff like that, it's a shame. And his, this guy's art was absolutely brilliant as well. Some of his artwork, it was amazing. He put hours and hours and hours into it. So, then, any more questions? Yep. How do you, like, say you really calm about it and why it not? How am I really calm about it? Um, I guess, you know, having just gone through it, um, it strengthened me as a person, I was told it, well, you know, it was really scary at the time. But saying that, the first time I didn't talk to a school, I was so nervous, I couldn't even eat my breakfast. And I was pacing at the front, I couldn't even look at the audience, I was pacing at the front, like a prisoner in his cell. I was more scared of, the, of this year group than I was. I'd just come out living with all these gangsters and prisoners and murderers. <laughs> and these were people putting more fear into me. Um, over time, I just got more and more used to it. And that school, I left that school wondering, you know, I had no idea what kind of impression I'd made. I was worried that I wasn't cut out for this. I got an email from the school two weeks later saying that, and this is a school that got my public speaking every week, saying that they voted me the best talk of the year. So, and I started to get all this feedback from the students and all these emails, you know, saying how they, my talk had made them think about drugs. So it's like going through this horrible situation, it's like it was my destiny. So I've got this opportunity now to influence so many young people. So I'm really happy with the direction that it's sent my life in. But at the yeah. same time, wasn't it also, and like you said earlier, you don't want to, um, you know, it's almost not about self-pity or anything like that, because you feel like he's taking responsibility for everything you yeah. said that, don't you? But actually, in jail, you, you haven't really emphasised some of the bits, mm. how personally and mentally it is. And yeah, there was a point, when I, got, when I got moved in with the cockroaches, and my bond was double, I was facing 200 years, and it's a pink eye infection, I could barely open one eye. And it just seemed like it was never, never going to end, and I was lying on my bunk at night, thinking about slashing my wrists and just bleeding out and ending my life. And the thing that would prevent that was, I had photos of my girlfriend and my parents, and I'd look at them and it would give me strength. And I'd think, alright, my mum's going to get a phone call saying the son is dead in an Arizona prison cell. It's just going to break my heart. And I just didn't have to, you know, I couldn't put my mum through that. And that was what would keep me strong enough to not do that. But yeah, I mean, it's, I lost my mind in there multiple times. But again, I don't want to sound self pity you know, like a whiner. I take full responsibility for what I put myself in there. You know, I, I got what I deserve. Thanks very much. All right.